Hello and welcome to Ars Electronica Home Delivery. So, behind me, you can see some amazing images. And, um, well, I mean, nature has always been a muse for artists. So, since we are in a museum where a lot of art is shown, it might not be that big of a surprise to see such, such images here. But, well, most of you might think, okay, well, the Ars Electronica Center, it's about electronic art, isn't it? So why am I seeing images? Well, those are really, really special. They, actually, they show where art, science, and nature come together. So this, these pictures were made by a studio called Eye of Science in Germany. And those were made not by a normal microscope, but by a, by a scanning electron microscope. The photo studio focuses on making invisible things visible, showing the unseen, basically. Because, as you can see, those are tiny creatures that you cannot see when you look at it with your ordinary human eyes, basically. For instance, here we have the round worm. It's about one millimeter in size. And basically, his entire nervous system has been totally examined. So actually, it's possible to artificially recreate it to create its neurons in a way that, um, like we have downstairs, we have a robot that can actually mimic its movements, and it hasn't really been programmed. They have just recreated the neurons, basically. Another very beautiful image of a fruit fly, as you can see them in the summer, around well fruits, as the name says. Then we have E. coli bacteria. They're actually quite important for our bowels, but um, anywhere else in your body, they can do a lot of damage, which is the reason why you should wash your hands after you've been to the toilet. And now let's move on to what has pretty much become the Ars Electronica's mascot. So this cute little animal, chubby, I think it's cute. Um, it's actually a so-called tardigrade or water bear. And they are amazing creatures because they have a so-called ton state where they get rid of all their fluids, basically, so they dry out. And in this ton state, they can survive almost anything. They can survive extreme heat, like above boiling temperature, or extreme cold, like um, absolute zero, close to absolute zero, and um, even in outer space. So um, a, about a year ago, a shuttle crashed on the moon, and scientists think that um, water bears that have come with the shuttle might actually have survived and might continue to live on the moon for a few years at least. So it's quite a fascinating little animal. And um, if, you're, like, if you're interested in seeing a living specimen, um, you might want to take a look at our family tour earlier today. Because, I mean, it's, um, I think it's in Serbian, but um, 
you can take a look at the images at least. Yeah, so actually we even have a um, scanning electron microscope here at the Ars Electronica Center. So right now I would like you to come with me and take a look. So uh, what looks a bit like a weird coffee machine is actually a very, very expensive uh, microscope. So you can like, it's about what you would pay for a good solid car. Not something overly fancy, but um, middle range car, something like that. And here you can see a project of two of my colleagues. Um, they want to take a look at Poland around Linz, the city we are located in. So now you might think, okay, well, but the pictures above, they were like, they had such beautiful colors. Why are those in black and white? Well, as it is, um, color is a property of light. So um, basically, basically, um, yeah, this is done with electrons. So of course you wouldn't have color and you have to add it later on. So this is also part of the creative process of eye of science, basically. And um, how do you do it? Well, at first you need a specimen, so you need some plant that has pollen, so you can pluck it out. There's a lot of more, a lot more specimen, so they have, they have collected quite a lot. And then you need a pad, which look like Oh, don't touch. All right. Um, they look like this. And then you need double sided adhesive tapes. They look like that. And when you're done, you put it into this thing that I can't remember the name of to save my life. And then you can put it in here and you're good to go. One downside of this microscope is that usually the specimen are, have to be dead because it uses a, vac a vacuum. I mean, since tardigrades can survive vacuum, maybe they can survive this too, but I'm really not sure about it. Um, yeah, so just to give you an idea about the power of this thing, um, a normal, um, a, like a, a light microscope, basically enables you to um, magnify a specimen a thousand times. But um, the newest and best um, scanning electron microscopes I mean, this one isn't like one of the best. It's like, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe 20,000 times um, magnification. I'm not quite sure, but the best enable you to magnify a specimen, a specimen 500,000 times. So it's quite impressive. Yeah, so basically that's it. The um, 
the artists of Eye of Science, they, like in an interview, they said that the appeal of all of this to them is just when you look through such a microscope, a completely different world opens up. So it's, it's almost like, um, like a parallel universe. And you can, you can like investigate new things every day. And what I also thought was quite interesting, um, the human, like the smallest parts within the human body, they look like a underwater landscape. So quite beautiful imagery. Yeah, so we're already at the end of our tour. I hope you learned something new and um, I hope I'll see you again soon. Have a good evening. <laughs>